Well, this mast is rugged, telescopic, well made and available from Waters and Stanton. Well, hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm glad you could join me. The arrival of a new garden shed meant that I had to move my antenna mast, a most inconvenient situation. But on the other hand, it'll give me the chance to perhaps talk about a mast that we've been selling for a long time, but not everybody knows about it. It's a product made by Spider Beams. Now we've been selling the German Spider Beam products for a long time, but they make some very interesting and very well made metal telescopic masts. Now the ideal garden of course is a half wavelength long whatever band you want to operate on with a tall tree at the end a 50 foot tree which is straight and very easy to get up and down and therefore easy to attach your end fed wire to it. I don't happen to have a garden with a 50 foot tree at the end so I've got to buy something and so this video really, and this is a short video, is all about the Spider Beam's telescopic metal mast. And it might be just the sort of thing you need to support your wire. This is the uh, telescopic mast that I've installed. This particular model is 12 meters high, so it's uh, quite a reasonable height. I first of all had to dig a hole. Well, in fact, I didn't dig a hole. I used one of these things. I bought it from Amazon. It's uh, 22 pounds delivered and it, it bores a hole some four or five inches diameter. It saves the digging and it makes the installation so much easier. And I'll show you here the hole that uh, I bored out. I went down around about two, two and a half feet, I suppose. And then I got some fence post cement. Now this is quick drying cement. I was a bit worried about the strength but it seems to be pretty strong and all you do is you pour the cement down the hole, the, the dry cement, the dry mix, um, fill it halfway up and then pour water into it and uh, then if you need some more put a bit more of the mix in and water in, stir it around a bit and within about 10 or 15 minutes it starts to set. It will take a lot longer to set hard. I left mine for about two or three days. But what I did then is I then put some uh, a regular mix of uh, sand and cement just to smooth out the top and bring it up to the level so that I could put my concrete slabs back in place. And it's, it's not a bad job really. <laughs> I wouldn't make a builder. Anyway, coming back to the mast. This mast I've owned for about five years. And I have to say that it's very reliable. Even though it's five years old, it seems to weather well. It's German manufactured and there seems to be some sort of coating on the alloy. But it certainly slides up and down just as well now as it did five years ago. And the adjustment is made with an Allen key. And I'll show you here, you can see the um, Allen key. You just put the Allen key in here and uh, you just um, uh, loosen the, uh, uh, the fastener. Um, telescope up and then fasten it again. It's that simple. Now the bottom section is just over two inches diameter, which is rather awkward actually, because it means to say you can't use a two inch U-bolt, but what I've done is I've put some angle iron into the ground and then I've simply fastened the mast, which sits snugly into the angle iron. I've simply fastened the mast using, at the moment, just a couple of hose clamps. Now, these hose clamps themselves I've had for two years, so they obviously don't rust. I'm not sure what they're made of, but they seem to be pretty strong. Got them from B&Q. This is not the final fastening. Um, I'll probably put another couple around here and also maybe some pretty uh, 
um, strong cord um, around it so that it won't move. As the only weight that this mast is taking is the end fed wire in my case, it's not too, it's not too demanding. Time will tell how secure it is, but as I say, I've had this mast for about five years and it hasn't let me down. So that's an easy way of installing a mast in your garden, um, particularly if you want to use it to support an end fed wire. Now, this mast will support VHF arrays. Um, I would think that probably you'd have to miss out the um, top section um, so that you get a sort of slightly thicker section to attach a rotator to it. I haven't personally done it, but I see no reason why it shouldn't be possible, provided you're not going to put a big heavy duty VHF array on it. So there we are, that's my take on the mast. I've now got a garden shed. I've got my mast back in place, which is the most important thing, of course. And all I have to do is just to telescope it up and I'll have a mast around about what, 35 foot um, supporting my end fed wire. So I'm a happy chap. There we are. Thank you for watching this video. These masts, I think we've got in stock down at Portsmouth. So if you're interested in one, click on our website and take a look. And as usual, we'd be happy to supply all the other bits and pieces you need in the way of coax cable, um, support cord and this sort of thing. It's all on our website. So thank you for watching this video. As usual, enjoy your ham radio. Take care. We'll speak soon.